<laughs> Good afternoon. We're very happy to be here today. Uh, my name is Angela Singh Bass, and I've been practicing Asian Buddhism since 2004. And my name is Satish Sadhana, and I've been practicing since 2009. <clears throat> Giving this experience today makes what we went through 11 months and two weeks ago, when we got married, absolutely worth it. <clears throat> Our wedding in Delga Mahal in Rajasthan was nothing short of a film gone wrong, resplendent with recurring themes of the caste system, corruption, and cruelty. We take our cue from President Ikeda in his frank discussions of the shortcomings of his homeland of Japan, which we apply here to India. The biggest thing the wedding has reinforced, even more strongly, however, is sticking to principle, no matter what. Both Sadish and I planned the four day wedding from top to bottom ourselves. Every day we would chant Nam Yoho Renge Kyo to the Gonzon for at least an hour for all our guests' happiness and for everything to go smoothly. For the wedding itself, we erected tents that the guests from over 28 countries were to stay in for the wedding. The contract read that they would be completely operational by the 19th of October, two days before the wedding was due to start. Come the 21st, not a single tent was ready. The backup generators for the electricity were breaking down, the sinks yet to arrive from Jodhpur, etc. The tent vendor, the vendor saying of no man's in luxury, rang two hours before the Sangeet was about to start and demanded a payment of four lakh rupees. He threatened to cut the electricity off and tear the tents down if we didn't see to his request. We brainstormed on what to do, because as practicing Buddhists, giving into the corrupt would never be an option. We kept chanting Nam Yoho Renge Kyo under our breath. People suggest that we pay him off and not ruin the wedding. The vendors were banking on the fact that we would care more about what society says here, the nutrients writings came to mind. <clears throat> Life always ends in death. That's a guarantee, but there's no point in fear. The vendor was run back, and Anjula intimated that he had five minutes to decide which option he wanted. Either the ceremony goes on, or it's cancelled. If he were to choose the latter, there would have been more than enough alcohol for all our guests. <coughs> we would dock an iPod, and the Sangeet would go on as planned. After the Bidai, another vendor, Jitendra Singh of Consortium Tours and Travels, came to us and said, write a blank check, sign it, and hand it to me. <laughs> Wondering whether the right thing was heard, I asked him to repeat himself. He replied, you either sign the check or you don't leave the tents. When Sadish and I made our way in our car, three thugs blocked it and forced us out. We were told our car wouldn't be allowed to go anywhere, and we were marched to the tent reception. There, the vendors started a volley of calls. <coughs> Forcibly, they were trying to extort money. In the most dire and pressing of moments, all our Soka and Biakran training and studying kept coming back to us and told us to fight intelligently. Their behavior reminded us very much of the Nishan Shoshu priesthood, threatening, refusing dialogue, and the excommunicating people without any reason. We were held hostage with a threat of gun to our head, and what followed was 16 hours of negotiation. The amount of mistakes that Satish caught on the bill was staggering. In the end, Satish found thousands and thousands of dollars of oversight. He calculated the precise amount under the pressure of five thugs, including the U-Rajas of Bayogur themselves, Vibindra and Shatran J. Singh, surrounding him for hours, prepared for physical assault. Every second, we were reminded about Nijan's persecution, and that this was ours, and we would get through it. Failure was not an option. We heard things like, why do you care? You're wealthy. This is nothing to you. Sign the check. It's a drop in the bucket for you. Yet, we refused to budge. Life is about choices. Taking the easier wrong as opposed to the harder right is tantamount to being a criminal of itself. We sat 16 hours without food, without blankets, trying not to panic. We were chanting Nami Horengi Kyo under our breath so powerfully and kept thinking, what would Sensei do? In that moment, I felt that this is what it means by the crucial moment. This is when we stand up and fight and not give it to panic. Thoughts of Gosho's we'd studied, quotes we'd read, images of Toda and Makiguchi in prison went through my mind. I was honestly prepared to die, but not give it. <coughs> I kept saying we will win and we will share this experience with our members. At stake was much more than money, it was principle and the opportunity to see if this fate really worked. The vendors impounded the car, the driver, and locked the gates with a padlock. We suggested taking this to court. Hearing this, they said, in court, you may have to pay more. In response, I said, I believe in the justice system and want a fair arbitrator. When this was said, they could see this was not a game of power play and threats, and they began to weaken. Refusing to panic, I said unblinkingly and calmly that I choose having a gun to the head and standing up for what's right rather than cave in, give the check, and live in years of regret for being a coward. 
By this time, nightfall was upon us, and our captors had proceeded to get drunk. They were slurring the words and asking us to sign the damn check. Everyone, barring Satish and I, passed out due to the lack of sleep and the alcohol. By the time everyone was passed out, it was 4.30 a.m. We had been there since noon the previous day. We both had the stamina, endurance, and grace to withstand all of this calmly because of our behind-the-scenes training. Those long 13-hour shifts to rock the era were worth their weight in gold. <laughs> when everyone was passed out, I tried to find an escape route. I tipped to a past a general manager who was passed out with a whiskey in his hand and saw a stack of rice bags. I scaled those, climbed the wall, and crossed over a glass shard line boundary, cutting my hands and feet. I found a way out, and we discussed the option of leaving, but realized we wouldn't be leaving our loyal driver behind. After 16 hours, they finally gave, uh, gave in, and we paid them the real value of the bill. We left the venue at 6.30 a.m. Sensei's words kept repeating in our head. The conviction of one person is enough to move millions is strong and pure enough and grounded in a solid life philosophy. Any poison can be turned into medicine. In the end, we chose not to counter with might, but chose to engage in dialogue and principle. The very guy who threatened to put a gun to my head came up to the car when we were finally being released and unable to look me in the eye said, I'm sorry I ruined your wedding. Sadish handed him a bottle of alcohol and simply said, here, I think you need this to help reflect. This was very reminiscent of Sensei's writing about Nietzsche and handing sake to the very soldiers who escorted him to his execution. As Kosen and partners, our unity was completely through the storehouse of Daimoku after Daimoku and our training at Soka Group and Biakarin. We both sat with our district and chapter WD and MB leaders and told them everything. We will never forget the compassion they showed, listening to us late into the night and offering their guidance. I spoke about not understanding why this had happened because we chant Nabi Kyo so much. One leader said that we don't know our past karma and that because of the good fortune we're creating now, nothing else happened to us because it could have been a lot worse. We practice this Buddhism to see actual proof. Through the trauma and grief, we still get up every single day to fight and to win. Throwing ourselves into activities, Soka Group and Biakrin, and, and the immense amounts of Buddhist study are completely helping us heal. Being silent is equal to slander. On June 26, after nine long months of perseverance, a great article was published in the Times of India, exposing the wedding story and aligning with what is right. This is repeatedly after everyone said it could not happen, it would not happen, simply because nothing happened. This was an example of turning the impossible into the possible. Following that, we've had meetings with Vanity Fair, Huffington Post, India Abroad, and further, New York Times has pulled out the review of Deogar. Right before our Buddhist ceremony here at the center in November, just as we were to start the ceremony, a leader came to Satish with a printed message from Sensei. He had no way of knowing that we were about to begin our Buddhist wedding ceremony, and the message read, Congratulations, I'm honestly chanting for your ha happiness. I feel he had sent this message in response to the Indian ceremony, but it came on the day of our Buddhist ceremony that we had never mentioned. This is the power of mentor and disciple in our hearts as one. In that moment, we redoubled our determination. Anjula and my determination are to keep fighting against this, against this corruption that is rampant in, in India today. We are in the process of starting an anti-corruption fund that will give people more of a voice. We're actually moving to Malaysia on Monday, and we pushed our move there back in order to give this experience. I thank you very much. For